Hey guys, it's your favourite YouTuber again, Dami Salari, and you're watching DS at Learning Finance. Whoa! <laughs> Today's episode is about stock market versus forex trading. What are the pros? What are the cons? I've done a lot of research, guys, and I think I'm just about ready to fill you in on it. But before I can do that, you know what to do, LSS, like, subscribe and share this video, and sit tight, get the popcorn ready, but also get the notepads and pens. <laughs> Some of you guys thinking, what is a stock market? What is forex trading? Well, to save you guys a quick Google search, yeah, because I'm that good of a guy. A stock market investment is basically investing, um, buying shares in companies and reaping from the benefits of the company. So the profit that the company makes, um, reaping from in terms of dividends, um, reaping in terms of share prices going up and you selling your share for more than you bought it, stuff like that. Um, another real important thing is when you invest in a company, you technically own a portion of the company. Even though it's zero 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 point one percent it may be, and it may be much more, I'm still owner nonetheless. But yeah, that's what stock market investment is about. Um, in terms of foreign exchange trading, what that's about is capitalizing from the different relationships between different currencies. So my first point is about risk tolerance. This is ultimately one of the most important points because it dictates what type of trading you're, in, you're more interested in, what type of trading is better suited for you. Are you the sort of person who could put the money in and be like, you know what, I don't care if I lose it? Or are you the sort of person who would put the money in and be watching it with your eye? Are you that sort of person? Me personally right now, <laughs> that's what I'm going to say but um, yeah so in terms of forest marking what it really does is it booms off of the volatility of it so the fact that one hour the euros could be booming the next hour the dollars could be booming euro markets um, the forex market sorry is better suited for short-term traders ultimately now stock investment market is more so a steady market in respect of the Forex market. Of course, you will have companies that really cap, that really make profits um, quickly, and you will have companies that really make losses quickly. That is that is that's pretty much everywhere. But um, in respect of the general stock market compared to the forex market, it's more much more steadier. Another thing that's good about the stock market is the fact that you can invest in blue chip companies. Blue chip companies are not notorious for having big massive sort of profit um, increases um, in short time to know they're not notorious for that. They're more notorious for steady increases over time in terms of dividends, steady increase in terms of share prices going up. That's what blue chip companies are notorious for and that's available on the stock market. It's a sort of thing where it's stock market is more suitable for the sort of buy and hold investor. You know when you love something so much you literally want to grab it and hold it and not let go. That's what buy and hold um, means. So it's a sort of investor that's not just thinking about now, but it's thinking about long term, five years down the line. They're not just trying to make a quick, a quick profit. The second point is liquidity. Forex market is highly liquid. We're talking about Neander Folds liquid. It's like literally running like water. So it's by the time liquidity, it basically means how easy it is to buy and sell shares. So the ability to invest in something and receive it back as soon as possible in terms of in your bank account. That's what liquidity means. So um, for the forex market, it's highly liquid. It's so easy. You won't have a problem investing in it and taking your money whenever you wanted to. The stock market is still pretty highly liquid. The, but the question is with what company? So if you're going to, for example, invest in Apple products, you won't have an issue with that buying and selling shares, selling your shares. You will not have an issue. But if you were to invest in a company that, I don't know, that only has one branch and is in a small island and is on that island has like just 10,000 people, 
then it may be harder to sell or buy that share. So the question lies in what sort of company would you be looking to invest in? Me personally, I'm not going to invest in a company that I completely know nothing about. I want to invest in a company that's big, that's that's massive, that's dominating, that does, just doesn't have one branch. That's my perspective. My third point, which is quite important, is availability. When are you actually available to invest? Now, slice this down the middle, there are two aspects. The first aspect is your lifestyle. Does investing fit around your lifestyle? The second aspect is when are these investing windows actually open? Now, a good thing about the Forex market is it's pretty much an open book. It's open all the time. Um, so it starts on 5 p.m. Sunday and closes 5 p.m. Friday in respect to Eastern time. Whereas the um, stock market, I'm not gonna lie, it's a bit limited, guys. So like, it opens 9.30 a.m. in the morning and closes 4 p.m. in the afternoon slash evening. And it's only from Monday to Friday. So if I wanted to invest in Saturday, on a Saturday, when I, um, which fits around my schedule, I wouldn't be able to do it for either. But if I wanted to invest on a Sunday, which is probably would be one of the best days for me to invest because it fits around my schedule, I would want to go for Forex, for example. Um, also, if I wanted to invest at, I don't know, after work, I would love the sort of availability of the Forex market. Um, for me personally, I have, at 8 to, I have to be at work by 8.30 and I finish work at 5. So if I wanted to do stock market investing, would it fit around my life schedule, guys? And that's just for me. For you, it might be different. For, for you, you might actually be available at those times. So you've got to really think about that sort of point because that will ultimately dictate its suitability to you. The other point is, guys, research. See, I'm a book nerd and I like to research a lot. The reason why I like to research is if I'm investing in something, I need to know where my money's going. I need to know if my money's being used wisely. I need to know, do as much research as I can to say, okay, if I've lost this money, there's nothing more I could have read. There's nothing more I could have done. That's the sort of reason why I like researching. The real big disadvantage by the forex market is that because it's so volatile, you don't have time to do that much research. You have time to react rather than be proactive. Do you see where I'm coming from? Whereas the stock market, you have time to research as much as you like. Their price range, it will pretty much stay constant for the next day. So, or relatively around the same sort of money for the next day. Whereas you wouldn't have that sort of privilege with the Forex market because it's just so volatile. And yeah, so that's really a big factor in research. Are you able to research where your money's going into wisely? I'm not saying that you can't do it for Forex, but what I'm just trying to say is you can do more in-depth learning in terms of stock market investing. My fifth point is leverage. Leverage is using financial instruments or borrowing capital to increase your profits from an investment. That's what leverage is. So uh, in the Forex market, You've got a whole load of leverage. You can dictate how much you want to invest. You can dictate how much you want to reap from your benefits because you can pull out at the right times. That's the sort of leverage you have in the Forex market. Um, compared to the stock market, you don't have so much leverage. But at the same time, it's really important to know that leverage can be a really good gain, but then could be a loss as well. So you've got to really be careful in the sense of if something's very risky, yes, I can make money, but also at the same time, I can really lose some money. Now, my sixth point is, what is your take on it? Um, I add that to the sixth point because it's the most important point. Because of that saying, one man's rubbish is another man's treasure. It's so true. What I see is prize may not be prize for you. Um, I can only speak from my perspective. So I'm just speaking from my perspective now. Um, obviously, you guys know I'm just getting started off of this. So I can't afford to be taking riskier steps. I can't afford to be doing that. Um, I have to take the sort of steady increase. I have to take my time with things. I have to be more patient. My goals are long-term, guys. They're not about short-term. I'm not about that sort of roller coaster ride where I'm up and down. No, that's not how I, how I want to be. I want to have to think about things methodically. I want to have to research loads. I want to have that sort of time to research loads about a company before I invest in it. So that's the sort of angle I'm coming from. And that's why I know that the stock market is going to be um, more suitable for me. Even though, yes, I may find it inconvenient to invest in during times at work, I still have time to 
look at my investments, stuff like that. So that's my take on it, guys. And I just want to know your take on it, I guess. Um, please put in the comments um, box below what you guys feel. Are you more tailored towards sort of Forex training or are you more tailored towards um, stock market investor? And with that said, guys, I'm going to have to leave you for this video. Stay tuned for next week because, you know, you know it's coming. Um, but before you can leave, you know what to do. LSS, like, subscribe and share. DS Learning Finance. Well, bye.